So now let me show you how do you um, quantify cycle inventory and uh, pipeline inventory. So to calculate cycle inventory, it's actually very simple. Uh, it depends directly on the size of the lot, Q, how much you order every time. So here the assumption is we're going to place our order uh, very efficiently. So when we receive uh, our, our next order, uh, we should just use up our last unit of the inventory. So at the beginning of this cycle, we have Q units. That's how much we ordered. And then we used it up uh, throughout this cycle. At the end of the cycle, we have zero. And then we immediately receive the next order Q again. So at the beginning, we have Q units. At the end, we have zero units. So over the entire cycle, the average cycle inventory level is Q divided by 2. For pipeline inventory, uh, we calculate it as a multiplication of the average demand per period, the D bar, uh, bar on top of D, we read it as D bar. So this is uh, the average demand per period. And then the L is number of periods in the item's lead time. So the lead time refers to the time interval between when we place the order and when we actually receive the order. So we define that as L, the lead time. So the demand during the lead time is average demand per period, D bar, multiplied by the number of periods in the item's lead time. So the pipeline inventory equal to average demand per period multiplied with number of periods in the item's lead time. So here's an example. Um, so there's a company they're buying drills uh, from their suppliers. So currently their average lot size is 280 drills. So the average demand per week is 70. And the lead time from the supplier is three weeks. So the wholesaler must pay for the inventory from the moment the plant makes a shipment. So that means as soon as the product is shipped out of the suppliers, uh, it becomes a pipeline inventory and this lead time is three weeks. So how much inventory uh, does this uh, company uh, hold uh, for the drills? So there are two kinds of inventory, cycle inventory and pipeline inventory. So if they order 280 drills every time, so the cycle inventory is half of 280, which is 140. Uh, on the other hand, the pipeline inventory is the multiplication between average demand per week, 70 drills, multiplied by the, uh, the lead time, three weeks. So they have 210 um, drills as pipeline inventory all the time. So combine these two together, uh, they hold 350 units of drills uh, in average in their possession. So remember, this number 350 is an average. Sometimes they have more, sometimes they have less. But in average, their inventory level is 350 every week. And compare this to a different um, ordering policy. So here, this company uh, is considering another ordering quantity, which is 350. So will this cause them to have more inventory or less inventory? So let's see. If they order 350 units every time, so the cycle inventory will increase from 140 to 175. Uh, 175 is half of the new order size, 350. But on the other hand, if they commit to purchase more every time, they will get a shorter lead time as a, as a benefit. So this time, the lead time will be two weeks. So this time, the pipeline inventory is only 70 times 2, which is 140. So combine these two together, 175, 140, uh, the new inventory level is 315 um, compared to 350, uh, 
uh, you can see the inventory level overall has decreased. So ordering more in this case, but getting a shorter lead time is beneficial than before. So they should take uh, this new uh, offer from their supplier to order more, uh, but get a shorter lead time. So from this example, you can see how uh, quanti quantifying cycle inventory and pipeline inventory can help you decide what's the best inventory strategy.